What is up everybody? Welcome back to another uh, graphing financial information tutorial where we left off. Let's bring that chart up. We were plotting this chart. Now obviously the date is a little, you know, it's kind of going under this, like this is overlapping the date. But this is clearly the correct price here. That is the correct date, even though we can't see it. If we adjust the size of this window, it kind of stretches up. Um, but we'll, we'll be coding it in to fix that in a moment. And, you know, we don't have a title. We don't have any labels over here. So it's not really a proper chart. And also, I'd like to have grid lines. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do in this video. So close out of that. And the first thing I'd like to do is, like, let's set up the grids. So here, uh, right underneath the last ax1.plot, let's do ax1.grid, and in parentheses, just type in true. That will add a grid to uh, what we're doing. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is we want to add a title and the correct label. So we'll just do that down here, and let's say plt.xlabel, and we're going to say the x label is date. And then plt.y label, for this we're going to, um, it's stock price. So now that we have the labels, let's bring up the graph again and the grid. So now uh, it makes it a little bit easier to read, right? When you have the grid on there, it's really easy to line up the date with, you know, the price at the time. Um, and then also, like, as you hover it, if you'll notice down here in the corner, you see the information. But if, like, your mouse is over here, it's still reading you information. But anyway... Um, and just like, let's go through a couple quick things. Again, this is all covered in my Matplotlib tutorial series, but um, let's go over a couple things to how to use this. For one, if you want to zoom in, like to different parts of the graph, um, you can use this like zoom in button and like let, and you make a square, like you click and drag a square and then you let go and now we've zoomed in. And as you can see, the date has actually changed with us, but we can't really see that. So let's go over how to fix that. If you click on this configure subplots button, it brings up this window here and you can kind of manipulate how much spacing there is on the side. Like you could have zero and it would just go all the way to the edge, but we want to have our labels seen. So like, you know, that looks pretty good, like 0 0.07. Then on the bottom, obviously we need more. So we're going to drag that up a little bit and now you can see date shows. And then the right, we could move it over slightly and these two are more in top you could bring up top we don't have a title yet but we will have one soon but since we don't have a title we could drag it all the way up um or have it a little bit of space there and then head space and width space or wide space i don't know what it really or maybe it's horizontal i don't know anyway this is like space between the like the tops of the chart so if you have more than one plot you would want to change this maybe um, but since we only have one plot, there's, that's not going to do anything. Same thing with the width space. That's not going to do anything. But eventually, um, it will do something. So you can kind of like remember these numbers, but we're going to go through and hard code it. So every time this chart comes up, we don't have to like set that stuff, right? Because that's kind of lame. So that's the next thing that we're going to do. But first, let's go through a couple more things with the chart. So as you can see, like when we zoom in, uh, the dates will change, you know, dynamically and all this. And let's say, like, you do this and you're like, oh, my gosh, this is way too close. Like, how do I get back to where I was? You can use these um, arrows to get back. And then you're like, oh, no, I wanted that one just prior. You know, you can go back forward and so on. The other thing you can do is you can click on this, like, I don't even know what it is. But it's so you can, like, kind of click, hold it, and you can drag the chart around. So that's how you do that. And then if you just get so lost and all you want to do is just get right back to where you started, you can hit this home button and it takes you back home. That's just how to kind of navigate these charts if you're unfamiliar with them. Um, but generally what you want to do is kind of code it in to display exactly what you want. But if it doesn't, you can still kind of go through and play with it. So anyway, that's that. So uh, what we're going to do now is let's do the subplot stuff. So the way that you do that is to edit it you do plt underscore or plt dot subplots underscore adjust and in here you put all those parameters um, that we saw so there was like left bottom right top w space and h space so let's go ahead and define them all and you can use that tool to figure out exactly what you want 
Um, or you can just kind of guess. And for us, um, I'm pretty decent at it. So <laughs> we're really sure, like with left, we want to, oh, like a 10. Bottom, we'll do um, 0.19. Right, uh, like 9.3. Top equals like 0.95, I think. So once we throw in a title, um, we'll want to have that. And W space, we're not even really going to touch those yet, so I guess I guess we could code them in, but we're not, we don't need them yet. Um, 0.20 and then uh, H space equals 0 0.07, something like that. You can adjust them, like I said, on your own if you want. So now let's add a title, and to do that, we're going to use what's called a super title, or sup title. Um, and for our title, we want it to be whatever the stock name is, plus a space and then a stock price. So if we're doing like Tesla, it'll say Tesla space stock price. So it kind of looks good. So let's save that and let's run it. And sure enough, on pop-up, this looks pretty darn good, right? The date is formatted nice and neatly. We've got stock price over here. The title is like perfect. That was a good guess. Um, yeah, so this chart is looking a lot better right on load. And what's nice about it is what you can do later on is instead of like loading up the chart in this little like figure diagram, you can just automatically shoot it out to a image like a PNG or you can do like a TIFF or whatever you want. Um, you can you can have it come out as so it's just it's kind of helpful to have it like already formatted just in case you don't want to actually generate the chart yourself uh, and you just maybe want to generate images real quick. So. Um, I think that's going to conclude everything I wanted to cover in this video. Um, in the next video, we'll be uh, continuing along here, and I think what we're going to what we're going to do uh, in the next one is like this is pretty. I mean, it's decent enough. We will get into doing like candlestick, and you can like change. You can change everything. Like you can change the font, you can change the colors, you can change the background here, you can change. Just everything, like all the line colors and the background color, the face color here and the background here, and all, everything can be changed. So um, there is a lot of customization that can be done, but and we'll get into that because everybody, like with their financial charts, they got to be like badass looking, right? You make more money if your chart looks badass. So um, we definitely have to do that eventually. But first, let's go ahead and get the essentials down. So in the next video, what we're going to do is start plotting up uh, volume data. So what we want to do, you know, you've got stock price up here, and then maybe down here you've got volume, right, of that data. So that'll be the next thing that we do. So uh, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, carry on to the next video. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support and your subscriptions. And until next time.